Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we proudly present our spectacular show of podcast magic and imagination full of Disney wonder, news, and pop culture. It's the Main Street Electrical Podcast with Jen Novotny and David Dollar. You ready? Yes, I just had to get recorded. Okay. Yep. All right, here we go. Three, two, and one. Merry Christmas, Jen. Merry Christmas, Dave. It's the Main Street Electrical Podcast. Podcast. Oh, you Very that? good. Oh, I heard you. you. Like I heard that? you. You okay. didn't sing it. You just said it in no, a I just sing-songy said it. tune. In a very Pod- sing-songy tune. Podcast. I heard that too. I think it's when you go high. I think the microphone cannot handle oh, the awesome. No. And it just it just blocks it out. I heard cast just then. So yeah, we'll see. get there. We're gonna we're gonna work on some of these octaves. Not, we'll get there. Podcast. Podcast. You know what? I heard that. That's great. We'll just take basically take that <laughs> and I'll edit in that little bit every week. When Everywhere. You go, oh, yeah. I'll just put that in there and it just sounds it sounds perfect. So uh welcome to the Main Street Electrical Podcast. I am Dave and that is Jen. It's the week before Christmas. And I say it week, is. literally, it is five days before Christmas. It's so cool. Um, Jen, two questions. Number yeah. one, how did you Disney this week? Well, I Disney this week by making some additional plans for my upcoming Disney trip. So mm, yes. yeah, we uh, met with next my, week, right? Yeah, with our traveling companions, yeah. my sister in law mm-hmm. and her husband, and we were mm-hmm. just kind of planning some additional dining and you know parks, mm-hmm. all of that fun stuff. So. Of course, of course, I got yeah. dining this morning. I Disney by doing dining this morning for a client. Oh, nice. Um, first time they have not been back. They haven't been to Disney World in a very long time. Their kids okay. have never been. So she had this list of you know Topolino's and Cinderella's Royal Table and Chef Mickey, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, these are. These are three home runs right here. These are hard hitters. Ooh. Uh, got all, got everything. Got everything Yay! they needed. I was really excited, included and added on a Woody's Roundup Rodeo, and I emailed the client. I'm like, "Hey guys, got everything we need. You know, maybe more because she had mentioned Cinderella's Royal Table or Eckersh's, and I went ahead and got both of them. And I'm like, "Let me know if you want to keep choices. both." I was like, "You know, I can cancel which one, whichever one. Mm-hmm. Would you know you don't want to keep one? Let's cancel it so yeah. somebody else can get it." But I went ahead and got it. Why? Because I'm awesome. That's why. Okay. So uh, you know, it, it's always. It's fun diving into dining when it works. Every now and then, Disney uh, Disney dining kind of collapses on you. Okay, sure. Um, it just doesn't really work as well as you'd like to. Um, yeah. You know, and if you hire up to Disney or listening, I speak truth here, being nice about it. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, but when it does work, it's really nice to be able to fly yeah. through there or grab what you need. You're done in 12 yep. minutes. Everything's nice. done. Everything's solid. So it's a good time. My second question for you, Jen. Are you ready for Christmas? Are like, are you personally ready? Hey. Presents, tree, decorations, everything. Are we good? Are we done? Tree decorations, yes. Presents, yeah, I think so. I think we're pretty good. Mm-hmm. It's just, man, I tell you what, it's crept up on me this year. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. How about it's you? Like they moved it up to December twenty fifth, which is I know, like I was like, insane. What? I don't know what happened there. <laughs> it's it's weird because there's literally like eleven days left in this year. I mean, it's over. It's, I don't even it's understand that. Done. And understand. 2023 is is gone, and mm-hmm. 2024 is coming. Um, just when you think they can't make glasses out of any other numbers, they they make glasses out of 2024. So New Year's Day is coming, and it's yeah, just, right. It's, it's gonna be crazy. And um, yeah, so we are ready for Christmas for the most part. I actually, the mm-hmm. kid and I, because he is at a school now. Uh, he's at a school yeah. this week and next week into the couple of days into the following week. Like I think he goes back January the third or the fourth, mm-hmm. which is insane. Um. I don't remember when I was in, and this is me, when I was in, when I was a kid, we went all the way up to like December 22nd or something. Oh I mean, yeah. It was totally. right. It was like a couple of days before Christmas. I'm like, Oh, right. Christmas, Christmas Eve is like tomorrow. You know, we're out of school today. Uh, and we went all the way to three o'clock. Now they're out like on the 18th at 11 AM. And then they oh go back, gosh. they go back for a half day or something in January. And I'm like, oh, crazy. Just, what the heck? So uh, we went with the kid and I, of course we go on our afternoon adventures. Mm-hmm. We went to the local Bucky's in town to buy a present for my brother-in-law. So we got that taken care of. And I think between that, between some local shopping, Amazon, some Etsy stuff, I think mm-hmm. our shopping is done. Our decorations. That's good. I mean, at this point in time, they might as well be done because right. everything I put up, I'm going to have to take down a literally a week. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> See, I just leave it what up. What the heck? Why not? Pretty much. It. Well, we'll leave it up probably till probably till the first, maybe second week of January, and then we'll start taking yeah. it out piece by piece. Or one of us, myself or my wife, Steph, one of us will get a little uh, a wild hair, and we'll just take everything yeah. and throw it on the table and be like, all right, let's put it up. And then it'll sit on the table for a week before we put it up, because that's what happens to our house. <laughs> so, so, yeah, let's get to a little bit of news. All right. 
Jen, the Disney Cruise Line has come out with their Castaway Club membership. This is one of the yeah. things that uh, it was not even a rumor. It's not like people were looking around going, "Ooh, mm -hmm. I hear something's happening with the Castaway Club." So, okay, so the Castaway right. Club. If you it, uh, previously up until today. If you sailed on the Disney Cruise Line, you were a part of the Castaway Club. You had a Castaway Club yes. number. Mm -hmm. um, I booked the cruise. Of course, I went on the Wish this past yep. February. Yep. My, I had not been since February of 2004. They yep. pulled up my Castaway Club number. It was like, here you go. My wife, yep. of course, has not been since 04. She hasn't been yet uh, back on the Disney Cruise. And so she's right. got a cl club number. Well, they made a change. They came out and said this today. Yes. Guests who have completed one eligible Disney Cruise automatically qualify for mm -hmm. Castaway Club membership. Absolutely. To remain in the program, Castaway Club members must book or sail on at least one eligible cruise within five years of their last Disney voyage. Mm -hmm. Okay, so number one, this th this makes sense because I would imagine there are a million people in the Castaway Club right now. Oh, if you so sail once, then traveled, you're in it. Yeah, for once, sure. And maybe they haven't sailed again or maybe they don't intend on sailing again. Yeah. Um, you know, crazy people that they may be or that maybe they can't. I don't know. Um, but I imagine there's just so many out there. Jen, do we know anything in terms of – because my big questions now are, are the people that had, again, speaking of my wife, is she mm -hmm. grandfathered in or is there like a set day going, okay, you know what? You're in it right now, but you have two years to sail and then you're out or is she just automatically out? Do we know anything about how this works? Well, I mean, we know that it's going to change, but I have not yet seen whether or not it's going to be like, okay, starting on a certain date. Like you have until right. this date to like do another sailing. I have not seen that. Um, happen. But of course they made some changes last year where they added the Pearl level, which is for people mm -hmm. who have sailed on 25. Yes. yes 25, 25 plus yep. Disney cruises. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I guess it's uh, just something to keep people coming back versus, Oh, I did all of these and now I'm this status, but I haven't sailed in 10 years and now I'm coming right. back and I have all these perks, but these, you know, I I'm sure that there's going to be very upset people. I'm sure that some mm -hmm. people will be not upset because they're like, oh, I sail all the time and that's fine. So I'm not sure what um, precipitated this, but for sure, this is just another incentive because it's such a great cruise line to yes. keep sailing. And, you know, mm -hmm. every five years, at least every five years, get a, get a three-day cruise in. And it does say eligible bookings. We don't know what that means. I would assume most are like eligible bookings, right? right? Like, right. you know, mm -hmm. yeah. So- yeah, I, I I guess my next question mm -hmm. too is Castaway Club membership. And again, I've only gone twice, two right. times in in twenty mm -hmm. years. Uh, do you know some benefits of Castaway Club? Like, if you're in the Castaway yeah. Club, why would it be worth it to keep your membership if Absolutely. you plan on cruising frequently? Castaway Club, so, tell us a little bit about that. Honestly, the biggest perks are for the early booking windows. So Pearl mm -hmm. gets to book their excursions, their et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, at a one hundred and thirty days out right and then it goes to platinum which is no wait platinum's 130 pearl mm. is like 130 it's a lot to remember so don't feel bad if you don't or something it. like that well you can and just then they say just, different levels like yeah. and then they just changed it on us but anyway right. it's pearl and then platinum and then mm -hmm. gold and then right. silver and then first timers so mm -hmm. the tricky thing with first timers is everybody else kind of got to book already right. and so there are maybe fewer of the excursions you want, or if you're looking for Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique, or if you're looking for like the Palo dining experience, those can be a little bit more difficult to come by. So the the perks are you get that earlier booking window and also earlier to do your online check-in, which gives you an earlier port arrival time. Now, also, there are different like swaggy items and things that they give you in the staterooms, but right, you know, right. Oh, obviously those things are great, but the reason, I mean, I would love, because I'm going to go on a Mediterranean cruise next year and one step away from gold. I'm like, if I can squeeze in a sailing, oh, get there. you're getting there. If I can squeeze in one sailing between there and gold. Then like, I would have this earlier booking window. <laughs> oh, I think that you can. I'm sure that you can. You're one of those. You're like me and my hubs, no kids. I run a travel agency, so my work schedule is not completely, totally set per day. Oh, well. Let's just go, that. you know. Let's just take off and go. And so, no, I'm not diminishing the fact that you work all <laughs> the time because you've been working like crazy the last couple of days. That I understand. Well, uh, but, but I'd have to complete it with, like, 
before that window would open. And I'm like, I don't know if I have time to like squeeze it in. True. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, and I've got several clients sailing in the spring. And so, and some are first timers and others have yeah. sailed before. Mm -hmm. And so I'm kind of getting their dates set. I think ones that like the first timers are at 90 days and yep. the ones who've sailed a couple of times before are 75 days for booking their, no, 75, and yeah. whatever. Um, yeah, they, the, the ones who sailed before get the, the benefit of booking mm -hmm. earlier. I guess 90. Um, and they were like, a, there's two different princess things. There's like a royal tea and a royal, uh, royal gathering of some sort. And so there's all mm -hmm. kinds of things you can book or whatever. Oh, yeah. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty cool little booking here. Um, so that's Disney Cruise Line. Matter of fact, you should probably call somebody at Disney Cruise Line and get some answers. Oh, yeah, okay. uh, sure. You know, call Josh to have him transfer you over or give you the right number. I I'm sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, um, no problem. Studios. One of the questions we've had before is the Voyage of the Little Mermaid. You know, our favorite Disney light sh laser light show. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with the puppetry and the yeah. black lights, something straight out of 1996, which I, it feels like kind of yeah. what it is. That theater has sat empty since the dark times, the dark timeline. That being, of course, oh my gosh, uh, COVID. Um, the theater has sat empty. However, they are now going to be doing a show in there. They've announced it just a couple of days ago. It's a reimagined stage yes. show inspired by The Little Mermaid, the classic Little Mermaid from 1989, not the newest one. Mm -hmm. It's going to be called um, Little Mermaid, a musical adventure. It's going to be uh, a, a new like music mm -hmm. Filled, you know, they're going to have puppets as well. They're going to have cutting right. edge effects, mm -hmm. new set pieces, a bold new design that captures Ariel's imagination and the emotions. And it's going to be centered more on Ariel and Eric versus the whole story itself. Interesting. Uh, you'll have kiss, kiss the girl. You'll have part of your world. You'll have Port mm -hmm. of Fortune of Souls. It's uh, it's going to be great. I'm looking forward to this. I like the original show. The original show was mm -hmm. fine. Um, it's not one of those. I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta see it all the time. I, I like the puppetry and stuff. It was fun. Yeah. It was sort of kind of cheesy because it was made directly mm -hmm. for little children. And I'm wondering if this is going to be something for the kids, but also kind of opens up using more technology for everybody. Sure. I'm hoping it doesn't lose that kind of that, that easy, quaint charm of it and not just, not just yeah. being like a projection show or whatever. But I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I think this is going to be cool. Yeah, I think it'll be neat. I'm actually a little bit surprised. I didn't think that it was going to come back. I really didn't. Well, it, it, it's one of those things where they just announced it and yeah. they're like, oh, this is what they're doing. And I, and I feel like I was Disney like, okay. has just a series of, my guess is there's probably a series on a whiteboard behind Josh or behind Bob. <laughs> they're looking at it going, all right, uh, number three, let's announce that today. Uh, uh, oh, hold on to number five. Number four, go and throw that out there. Uh, number one, <laughs> next week we'll do number one. And yeah, I, I just feel like there's a series of things they're ready to announce yeah. or just kind of throw them out there. Rocket Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith closing for an extended refurbishment, which they just yeah. closed it earlier. I mean, year, it was just uh, closed. Um, what I'm reading is that there's a problem they keep having with the launch mechanism, which of mm. course this is a 24 year old ride I mean, now. It's not new. Um, there was all kinds of rumors about what they're going to do, and they're going to refeam yeah. it. New bands are going to come in, maybe a Nickelback roller coaster or a Creed oh, roller coaster, or just you know who knows some some of the popular bands, yeah. right? And so uh, you know there's going to be different different retheming for the whole thing. I still think they should make it a Muppet coaster. That would be amazing. Um, <laughs> but they opened it back up, and everything was just fine. They basically yeah. changed some of the artwork in the hallway, and everything was pretty much yeah, the same. pretty much the same. So they're closing it on January the seventh uh, of 2024. Which with no uh no open date in sight, which they can't really give you an open date because they have to go in and do what they're going to do. I don't yeah, know. exactly. Um, do you think it's time for a re? Okay, so you personally, do you think it's time for a rethink? I love Aerosmith, so no. <laughs> really? Okay, I time for a rethink. I think Aerosmith is they're retiring, of course. Um, you know, Stephen Tyler's had some issues over the last couple of years as they well, are. and um, so it's it's almost like Aerosmith is not. I don't say they're not relevant because I feel like they are because they're such a classic band. They're classic. Be like saying the Rolling Stones aren't relevant, uh, even if they're not relevant, yeah. they still are. But at the same time, I wouldn't mind going to something like the Muppets or something like that that could be more like a, I guess a permanence that like you can just keep there forever, um, and that would be so hugely popular like a dr teeth and the medicine uh, dr teeth and the, uh, the, the the mayhem uh would be amazing i mean um, but some like would that, argue so. and say that aerosmith is more relevant than the muppets yeah but they'd be wrong that's the whole <laughs> thing that's the whole thing is they would be wrong um i mean if they so, rethemed yeah. it would i be mad i mean it depends on what they choose as a retheme like if they pick like high school musical then i'm ticked if they pick, well, I, like... I don't think they're gonna go that direction maybe i'm wrong maybe um, the hannah montana coaster you know yeah like that would uh, be like a hard pop, pass for me you know pop rock coaster no I, I don't think so um you know they're, they're playing the climb as you're getting into the coaster i don't i don't yeah. think that would work right. now, if they kept it aerosmith which they probably will do i'm not gonna be mad either i'm not gonna be like well they need to change it i'm out you know i'm not doing any of that but 
I wouldn't mind a retheme. I'd be fine with that. Uh, but I don't know that they can go to another band unless they did something like a Taylor Swift coaster. I don't know that they have yeah. another band. Oh, but even then, deck. but then you just said something that's going to be like more evergreen. Well, at some point, Taylor Swift won't be evergreen. <laughs> well, yeah, I was going to say that too. At, you know, 10 years from now, who knows where Taylor Swift will be? Yeah. 20 years from now, who knows? And who knows will be coming in? Uh, because if we were having this discussion in 2001, we'd be like, I mean, it's going to be a Backstreet Boys, Boys coaster, right? They're the most popular band in the world. It needs to be the Backstreet Boys coaster. <laughs> I, I don't know that you would be saying that, but uh, uh, no, it would be know, an in sync coaster. That's true. An in sync coaster uh you know a debbie gibson coaster which we know I'm would sorry. be tiffany did you say i tiffany? mean debbie gibson i heard tiffany. i just said debbie gibson kind of out of the blue so anyway uh, <laughs> uh jumping over here sea world which by the way yes. did you know that sea world's down the interstate it's down down the road from uh I've universal heard a rumor i've heard a yeah rumor. it's sea world sea world orlando does not have any hotels they have no hotels no they site. have partner um, hotels they do have like hotels they partner with it's like Disney's good neighbor hotels, but yes. they're partner hotels. Correct. Uh, well, they have filed a plan review with the Orange County for a 504 room hotel that they're going to try to build on 30 mm. acres of land at the corner of I Drive and Central Florida Parkway. Okay. And they're calling the project named Starboard. Starboard. Uh, they Starboard. were looking at a 15 foot. Well, Starboard is what the word is, but I was trying yeah. to. Oh, Starboard. Okay. okay. Starboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Um, it's not like starboard of the, the park itself. Uh, it's a 15-floor yeah. hotel, including 740-something parking spaces, 43,000 square okay. feet of convention space and conference meeting rooms, mm -hmm. rooftop bar. Um, and they're going to try to make it where they could access the theme park from a boardwalk across the grounds. I mean, the plans Wait. are actually online. They actually look pretty cool. I've never been to SeaWorld. It's one of those things where I, I, I want to go. Mm -hmm. I've just never been. Uh, I feel like I should go at some point in time in my my yeah. traveling career, but it's like when you get down there, it's like okay, I got I got five days at Disney World. So she took a day to go to Sea World, but that's a day that I'm not in Disney parks. You know, <laughs> I, I, can, I can also go to Universal, but what do I do? Yeah, I don't know. So uh, yeah, I, I I'm gonna have to make it over there. I'll tell you what, agency sends me, then I'm I'm on the I, I need to be on the next Sea World fam. Uh, I'm sure when Sea World has a fam for that, we'll uh we'll we'll, we'll yeah. take care of that. So. So really, that's kind of the big news coming out of the uh, Orlando theme park area. Got some information on our podcast. I thought this okay. was just fantastic. I looked up some numbers. Um, great year. We had 48 episodes over the 52-week span. Um, Not bad. Actually counting this one, 49 episodes. So we missed yep. a couple of weeks here and there, which which happens. happens. You know, it's just a little crazy. Uh, we had a number of first-time people on the, mm -hmm. on the podcast. Melissa Reagan, who is a great supporter of the show yeah. for the food podcast. Emily and Jessica, uh, they were on 165 talking mm -hmm. about all, all about Disneyland. We, of course, had our friend John Rogers come on. Yep. Steve Glosson, who talked all about mm -hmm. the Star Wars and MCU and stuff. Our friend Michael Nip came on to talk about Star Wars and, and all the pop culture-y stuff. Um, you know, we had uh, we had our good friend Marcy talking yes. about Antarctica. So she was yes. on the show as well. Uh, most appearances on the show who are not us, Kyla, Kyla, Kyla was on five times. Uh. Quasi producer Heather was on four times during the show itself. Uh, we had over over 17,000 downloads of the show this past year. So oh, thank wow, you guys. Great. To everybody, thank you. everybody that downloaded. Uh, here was our top 10 most downloaded episodes. I thought this was a fun little list. Um, hmm. Number 10 was the end of the 50th. The three of us, oh, myself, yeah. you and Heather got together, talked about the 50th anniversary and all that, whatever. Uh, number nine was the 22 in review um, when we talked about the first episode of this year was mm -hmm. talking about all about last year, which we're okay. going to do something like that in January, talking about 2023 yeah. in review. It was yeah. me and you and Heather once again, very popular. Uh, my experiences on The Wish was number eight on the list. Number seven, um, this kind of shows me that people love hearing information from our show because number seven, most downloaded episode of the year was episode 144, the airports, transfers, and TSA. We had a long conversation about airport transfers. We did. About, about we did. TSA, about rules, what not to mm -hmm. do, what to do, whatever. Of course, we had our good friend Steve Glosson come on for uh, MCU updates. That's the number six episode. Number five, wow. the Run Disney Rookies. Myself, you, Kyla, got together, talked oh, all about Run yeah. Disney. Uh, number four was our friend Marcy, the Antarctica episode. Boop, boop, boop. Uh, so, yeah, a fourth most downloaded episode of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to love this, by the way. Number three episode was the Grand Floridian. When we talked all about the Grand Floridian, and we talked all about the mm -hmm. damn death. That was episode mm -hmm. number uh, 147, so if anybody wants to go back to that. Uh, and at least this is the number two most downloaded episode, Pop Century. It be the Grand Floridian downloads. <laughs> fake news. Hashtag fake um, news. By only a handful of downloads. So if you want the Grand Floridian to pass that, you need to go call some friends. Be like, hey, download go this call episode your real quick. Go call your friends. Go call your friends and such. And the number one most downloaded episode, and I don't, this is just random yeah. why it's this. It's episode number 146 from March. 
the one with all the latest magic. Apparently, there had been such a massive news dump that day of news like huh. coming out with all kinds of just random things going heading into spring break. We had an entire episode of yeah. nothing but just this is happening and that's happening and Tron is coming yeah, up. And, you know, yeah, yeah, And um, you know, Galaxy Bites the kiosk is opening and just as so I looked at the description on online on uh, the MSA Podcast dot com on our website mm-hmm. and it was just it, like a whole lot of random stuff and so. That was the episode people came oh, on that's to just so funny. find out about find out about all of that. So yeah, that was the most downloaded episode <laughs> of the year, which is crazy. So Jen, we're gonna talk about 2024 Great. real quick. Yeah, um, let's do it. Let's talk about a few uh, a few predictions for okay. the year. Okay. Um give me a prediction for 2024 for terms of Disney or theme parks in general, the cruises, whatever. Mm. Uh give me something. You know what? I think this is gonna happen in 2024. Um, and I'll hold you to it, of course. Like I I'll Oh, obviously. It. Okay, yes. well. Let's start with one that I'm fairly, fairly confident of. I feel mm-hmm. like in 2024, we will see the last of the construction walls coming down in Epcot. And before you say, Jen, they came down. No, they didn't. Nope, the interventions, still walls up. We still have walls yep. up. We still mm-hmm. have like a lot of work to do in there. But I do think that we're going to see the remainder of the construction walls finally come down <laughs> in Epcot. I like it. I like it. I, I'm going to predict that next summer, probably late summer, heading yeah. into D23, which is going to yeah. be the big uh, – I mean, there's there's all This is the big D23. We'll the big the big D23, the and big we'll one. talk about that much closer to time about what of might course. be coming there. But I predict we're going to get – and I'm going to say maybe a week leading up to D23. Okay. Somebody like on, on X, Twitter, whatever, like mm-hmm. Scott Gustin, who is just amazing when it comes to these announcements, mm-hmm. is going to predict – or is going to release – that, that that a new land is coming. Like they're going to officially announce. You think they have do that a new before D twenty three coming? No, I don't think they'll announce before D twenty three. I think the news will leak before. D23. Oh, I see what you're and saying. I think okay, it'll be one okay, of those okay. that everybody will be talking mm-hmm. about it, but nobody can confirm it until Disney says it. And I think okay. it'll be the worst kept secret for the entire week. But I think well, Disney it will, will be announce... the worst kept secret whenever it does come out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I think Disney will officially announce a brand new land. I'm going to go one step further, mm-hmm. and I'm going to say it's a villain's land in Magic Kingdom. That I could be wrong about, but I do think, and maybe this might be a safe I feel like that's like a yours. solid prediction. The villains would be a solid prediction. But I think it will be I think it will be in Magic Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, they've listened to I the episode that. That Heather and I did last year about all of the uh, the new villains mm-hmm. land that could be put in place. They're gonna take they're gonna pull from that. It's gonna happen. Yeah. I, I see it happen. Yeah. I think I could be wrong. I think they're gonna also announce well, I, they they have announced that they're going to do some expansion into Animal Kingdom, mm-hmm. but I think that yep. they're going to announce maybe some additional attractions as well. I think that that's, you know, as part of it, I think they're going to give some more information. And I do think one is going to be more of an attraction based thing, right. not just mm-hmm. like this area, but we're right. adding something. <laughs> I mean, I, maybe that's a no brainer, but I feel like Animal Kingdom hasn't since Pandora, there really hasn't been anything new. Right. And we haven't gotten new rides. So I feel like it's yeah. kind of due for one. Well, Magic Kingdom and, Pan- and Animal Kingdom, I think, are the next two kind of up for, yes. for like adding to. Yeah. Uh, I am predicting between the two of them, four mm-hmm. new attractions. We're going to get, okay. I think we'll get two in the new land. I think we'll get at least one, if not two, in, uh, in, in Animal Kingdom. In Animal Kingdom. Um, and I think they will be simultaneous productions. I think, you know, you think, with, you think they'll with, do the same time? I think they'll do the same time again. Here's why. I think with both of them, mm-hmm. it's not like Epcot where gonna have, they're going to have to put up walls in the middle of the thing or even like New Fantasy Land yeah. where you had to walk all the way around it. With this, you just close off Dino Land. You just close out the area off That's and you true. fix it. Um, Magic Kingdom, you just close off that area, which you can't get to that area anywhere w- where it true. would be behind Big Thunder. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can't walk that way anyway. So they just yeah. do it and they can work on it as much as they need to mm-hmm. without, and during the day they can work on it, you know, at night or whatever without yeah. worrying about guests and stuff because it's out of the way. So I think both would go on at the same time. Mm-hmm. I'm going to predict four new attractions. Um, one of them being the Indiana Jones coming yeah. to the dino. I think they take the dino out. I think they put Indiana Jones in. Um, again, oh, that yeah, but I I feel like aside from that, there'll be another new attraction because yes, I mean I that, that's so still the same attraction. So it's just I think so a, too. Yeah, um, different I think overlay. Be some sort of dark ride. I think there will be at least one thrill ride, and I think there'll be at least one yes. dark ride. Uh, oh yeah, definitely a dark so, ride. Yeah, for so sure. I'm gonna predict. I'm gonna predict four new attractions coming. All right. Um, you know, and I'm hoping that Disney again. I'm gonna say it. A, I'm gonna say it yeah. a thousand times between now and then. Knock it out of the park. They're gonna have to. And I think. I think they're gonna come out swinging at D twenty three. I agree. I really think. I that. also think we yeah. make it another restaurant. Possibly okay. in the Animal Kingdom, like mm-hmm. in that new America's land. Right. I feel. I mean, we're gonna lose Restaurantosaurus, obviously. Of so of clearly, course. they're gonna put in a new quick service. It wouldn't surprise me to get another table service. 
Now, if you can think of where Restaurantosaurus is located, is that possible? Is that on the edge of Dino Land? Could they just retheme that to something else, or just keep it even open for a while um, while closing the? Rest I of really Dino like Land, that is- one, honestly. Okay, <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> I my heart wants to say yes, right? But the rest of me is like, I don't think it can happen. Yeah, I, I can't remember where it is located in Dino Land. Whether it's completely I can like, like immersed in the land, or if it's on the edge, I'm not. I can't remember. Well, and of course, yeah. No, yeah, I feel like you thing. have to pass <laughs> Hurdy Gurdy's whatever the right the Dino whatever. <laughs> I feel like you do because like you you walk under the big dinosaur. Mm-hmm. Come around. Oh, yes, it Hurdy-Gurdy's might be whatever, possible, whatever, so, but yeah. but then like what else are you going to theme it to? Because it's not. I don't feel like it's close enough to anything right. else. Well, now I'm they might be able to leave would, it open. I'm just until, thinking they would leave it open for a might, while. For a so while, they, can, they, they might have another yeah. restaurant there. That's um, possible, but I also so, yeah. could just see it all going down. Like, nope, we're just shutting it off here. Speaking of restaurants, I'm predicting that 1900 Park Fair reopens in the Grand Floridian. Oh, that's a bold one. Uh, that's a I bold think, one, David Dollar. And I think it's going to reopen with characters again. Maybe not at first, okay. but I think it opens maybe summer. That's a bold and prediction. And I think by the end of the year, characters come back. That's my prediction because people are clamoring for it. It's well, another character meal. Um, I think it's a great yeah. meal to have. It's somewhere else to keep people mm-hmm. at the resort versus in the yeah. park. Uh, people, people absolutely love it. So I'm pre- predicting... 19, after 1900 Park Fair reopens, mm-hmm. besides the Every, ones that maybe they're just keeping closed, is everything is everything pretty much reopened? That's is the it, last one that, that the, I can actually think of that's not that's not open. I think that is yeah. the last one. Yeah, that's what I was thinking because I'm sure there's the, off off the top of my head. I'm sure there's one or two they just haven't opened because they're they're changing well, them. Or, like Boys I mean, of the like, Mermaid, that attraction thinking, they're changing or whatever. Like but, okay, at Magic um, Kingdom, they're they're oh, the um shoot the one by Pirates that that was only open seasonally. Do you know what I'm talking about? I talked about Tortuga or Tortuga uh, Tavern, right? Yeah, Tortuga Tavern, yeah. which they're gonna like officially make into something else. So obviously exactly. it's not open, but else. that right. I right, feel right, like right. that doesn't count because it's, no. no. Yeah, that doesn't count. No. Um, um, I want to predict too. I also want to predict too that Bon Voyage is going to. I was about to say again. that you stole. Okay, mine. I was going to say. Uh, yeah, sorry. Well, I, that's not my prediction. I was going to say. I just wanted to say it, but you go ahead and say it. Okay, I was going to predict that Bon Voyage Breakfast is going to get back their character. <laughs> that would be so great. That'd be so fantastic. That was a. I, I mean, love that's a great one. That breakfast. It's I a do. Great it's breakfast. So, it's so good. It's not that expensive. And it the would take are great. some of the pressure off of Topolino's. Yes. Yes. Because Topolino's even, is really hard to get. And even Cape May, which is right around the corner, and they have yeah, characters exactly. for breakfast. And so they you do. can have characters in both places, which is great. Um, and wonderful. it's a great place to go before you hit your Epcot day because it's yes. right there. And we would do that a lot of times. Absolutely. Especially with the Skyliner there. Oh, we would go oh, have breakfast, yeah. hop the Skyliner, and shoot over. So, yeah. so yeah. Um, any other predictions for, for Disney World that you have? I mean, I think that's the main ones. I think it's possible. Like, I think we'll obviously be getting more details on Tiana and like, mm-hmm. like the, obviously the official opening yeah. and et cetera, et cetera. Right. I wouldn't be surprised to get like maybe a couple more retheme announcements at some mm-hmm. point. Not that it's going to happen, but I think we covered like the main, what I think is going to happen. I just really need right. those Epcot walls down. That's right. all. Yes, yeah, so that would be nice. Um, I'm also going to predict that sometime by the end of the year, by the end of 2024, mm-hmm. we will get an opening window, whether it's a date or not, but opening yeah. window of Universal's Epic Universe. Like they will say mm, for sure. June 2025 or July or, or opening they might give or summer. Like they probably will say summer. They'll probably say like but summer. I, but I think we're going to hear a projected like they're they're shooting for like June, which would make sense. Memorial Day would be the, give the entire summer. But I also um, wouldn't be surprised if it got a little delayed at some point. That's true, but this is Universal. This is not Disney. I mean, yeah, literally, I know, but like even just I mean, still supply they built things. and closed three hotels since we've been recording today. <laughs> I mean, like seriously, it's just, it's just there's. I mean, that's the I, I make that joke a lot. Yeah. But Universal is so fast They're about fast. building their stuff. Of course, the downside is the half the time it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like it's open. It doesn't work. I mean, like again, Volcano Bay when it opened, it opened on time. But the it was Bay slash little... Volcano. See yeah. Adventure Motorbike, <laughs> ha- comma, uh, Hagrid's. Hagrid's. I mean, see Coaster, ha- comma Velasa. I mean, right. just it's you know it. it of course, they tested Velocicoaster for like eight months before they reopened it or whatever, before they yeah, opened they it. But, um, but yeah, so those are my predictions as well. Um, anything else, all, just overall, Universal, Disney Cruise Line, Adventures, mm. but anything big? Um, I mean, Adventures by Disney, I'm sure will continue to get new itineraries. Like they've mm-hmm. introduced some already, some yep. like newer itineraries. So that wouldn't surprise yep. me. Disney Cruise Line, obviously, we, we know about the ships. I We will get the name. We will get the yes. name of the, well, we know the treasure, clearly. Yes. We will get the I name. I called it. Of the um, 
Oh, shoot. The one that's going to be the, the big ginormous one that they inherited, right. not the one they built from scratch. That's the adventure, right? I oh, think that's the Disney adventure. That was the adventure. So I yeah. think we'll get the name of the... The cruise company. Yeah, the new ones they're building. The, I think I think we're going to get... The third sister we're supposed ship. To get, supposed to get two more, actually. Two more ships. Um, because so there were going to be three in yes, the fleet. There were going to be three in, in the fleet. So, it's so I am... The Wish, the Treasure, treasure and mm-hmm. something. Okay. Well, and this is pre-COVID, but before that, I think they had, they mm-hmm. before the wish was coming out, but it was going to be one of like five that they were coming out with. Um, well, they had announced three in the first, uh, in the wish class. Okay. So three okay. in the wish class. Okay. So we're going to wish treasure. Um, it's either going to be called the celebration or the imagination. That's that's you've my, been calling my, celebration or imagination. That's my that's my name for either imagination or celebration. I would it I would goes along with the theme. celebration so, would yeah. be what I would lean toward. Yeah, I could maybe see that. imagination see for like the you know, the next right. two that they, right. you know, the, well, I was worried about imagination in terms of like, that's such a, a mm-hmm. huge, such a big term in Disney it is. Um, that you don't want to be like, well, you know, this is imagination and that's imagination. But then they came out with a movie called the wish and I'm like, I mean, now that's up in the air. Now that's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. And so um, Disneyland, I wouldn't be surprised to hear more about, I don't know, some additional attractions, maybe in mm-hmm. the Marvel universe there, because they do right. have that. I mean, they've already announced and teased some of it, but I think we're going to get continue to get more details. Well, and and nobody's talking about this. We haven't really talked about it either. But there are plans apparently to put mm-hmm. a third third theme gate park in Disneyland, a third, third gate, gate. Mm-hmm. like that basically winds through the Disneyland Hotel area. It like, has been rumored. Several new attractions. Forever. It's been rumored. Forever. The plans Ever. are out there, and, yeah. and it's one of those things we probably should talk about maybe in the new year, kind of what yeah, that maybe would look the like new year. because yeah, that's um you know the, I've seen some of the plans and some of the ideas mm-hmm. and renderings that you're looking at. And you're going to have like several new attractions that will right. be right by like Disneyland Hotel walks right into the park. I mean, it's just it's it's crazy. I mean, that would be um, just like amazing. Yeah. I mean, there's really no world. I mean, they they don't have a ton of land there. So you've got to wind it around the hotels and stuff. And uh, maybe they should do that at, uh, at, at your Walt Disney World. They could they could do a park right around the All Stars. Um, you know, you could have about. like it, it, it could, to fit the All Stars, it could be like a carnival where you have like the Gravitron and like no. the Zipper and the no. Scrambler. And no. Zips. I think that would work well. I think no, that'd be, that would be a good time. That'd be a good. Time. Somebody help me! Oh my gosh, somebody help me! So you got tickets for Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom. Uh, let's see, Hollywood, Epcot, and the All Star Theme Park. Is that right? That's going to be a hard pass. <laughs> no thanks. They're, they're, it's, it's a partnership with the Fun Spot, and so they're uh, they have go kart tracks there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good place to stop. Uh, Jen, anything that you want for Christmas? Anything that you're like, you know what? I would love to have this under my tree for christmas realistically of course oh okay realistic oh that's not fun Mm -hmm. um honestly i don't there i i i don't have a christmas list i want to go out and have a great dinner with my Mm -hmm. husband and just enjoy like just enjoy some some time off like i don't really like i feel like that'd be an easy thing honey let's go have a great dinner i think he'll go okay let's go (laughs) I mean, like it's kind of planned, but that like, that's yeah. what I want. Like, I yes. just want to go have like a great meal, like mm-hmm. enjoy a night out dressed up and yeah. yeah just and and a, go to Disney think, right after, which is, also which hard. I mean, they can't just, go wrong, yeah. whatever. So last question here about the Christmas, about mm-hmm. the Christmas stuff, your favorite present that you've purchased for somebody like you're excited to, to give. And, you know, oh. my wife doesn't listen to this, so I can also answer this as well. Um, You know, she's not going to listen to this episode until right. probably after. And so, right. Are you, are you allowed to say, or you're like, oh, I yeah, no, I don't, no, I can't. Okay. So yeah. what's funny is because the way Brady and I exchange gifts are, we mm-hmm. will go to Disney and we'll like just buy each other gifts there. So I, I, <laughs> I awesome. can't be like pre excited mm-hmm. about giving him something. Cause I don't really know what right. it is yet because that's, right. but that's intentional. That's what we do. Right. But like in terms of family gifts, I am so excited for my niece to open her. <laughs> because <That's awesome. laughs> she wants things like long nails okay so she's 10 and so she like i got her some press on nails and she Mm -hmm. wants makeup and a makeup organizer so i got her all the sparkly makeup and all of this like that's awesome like beauty paraphernalia buy her a caboodle i well it's almost like a caboodle it's from it's from ulta (laughs) and so like literally i cannot wait for her to open up all of these things and jen's gonna be a rock star oh and she wanted hats so i got her like the cutest little like bucket hat and like a little love it i love it and like not that i'm not excited to like for my nephews to open theirs but Mm -hmm. i feel like she's gonna be way excited this is a perfect present for her yeah Yeah. and this is gonna be great because you're like and who's your favorite 
I right. mean, Me. exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, so um, I bought stuff an iPad and I'm so excited oh, to give it to her geez. because we've had, we, we, okay. So we got, we got nooks from Barnes and Noble like 15 oh, yeah. years ago oh, yeah, and I got a color one. She had a black and white one because she uses it for reading, obviously. And right. I used it for other things as well. Well, you know, I ended up getting like my phone, which is, I do a lot of stuff with my phone and mm-hmm. ended up getting an iPad. And, and I was like, I have a nook here. I don't use you can you can use it. It's right. fine. And so she's taking it. Well, 15 years later, the battery's kind of dead on it. It doesn't really work very well or whatever. And so yeah. I went out and got her an iPad. And I'm really excited about it. I'm like, I'm like, here you go, it's yours. And so it's, it's I'm really excited about giving that to her. Oh, so stop behind me. Okay, good. So yeah, yeah I'm pretty excited <laughs> about that. And of course, we went, um, Campbell and I went to the store, went to a, a local store. Mm-hmm. I asked her, I was like, Campbell, you know, mom wants some books, she wants some music, and she wants a t-shirt, she wants some shirts. What do you want to get her? And he said, books. I was like, are you sure? Books. So we went in. I found three or four that, that I know she was on her list. Mm-hmm. I kind of put them like on a shelf. And I'm like, there's the books that mommy wants. Which one would you like to get her? And he pointed and he was like, that one. You sure? Yes. So oh. got her book. Yeah, book that she wants, which is really cool. So uh, so yeah, She's we're, we're, love we're pretty excited. We're pretty excited. So we're also excited about next week as well, of course. Uh, next week, we will be doing our Candlelight Processional episode, mm-hmm. which Jen and I have done the last couple of years, where oh, we yeah. basically have done the narration for the Candlelight mm-hmm. episode. And the first year we did it, it was great. The second year, we kind of flopped the roles, flip off the roles where yeah. you know we read the different parts and stuff. Well, this year, we have asked some of our favorite friends to come on, uh, some guests of the show, yes. some people who have been part of the show over the last year or two to come on and talk mm-hmm. and the narration and do the narration with us. And that'll be coming next week. I'm really excited yes. about it. I'm still assembling the voices and still getting I've had a lot of enthusiasm. A lot of people I've reached out to have said, absolutely, let's do mm-hmm. it. It's going to be a great episode. So don't so forget excited. to tune in next week between Christmas and New Year's, which is great. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, Jen, where can we find you and follow all of your adventures next week? Oh, well, you can find me at Upon a Star Jen or my personal Instagram is Jen underscore Novotny. And then of course, Upon a Star Travel will be sharing stuff. If I yes. remember to tag David, I'm sure he'll- Yep. Yep, yep. And there is also a YouTube show. I like to call it the Kyla show because she's on it every other episode, but it's called, <laughs> she's on it a lot. Tra- it's called Traveling with the Stars. That's not just a TLC channel uh, travel show. Yeah, right? That's actually a YouTube show as well. So Jen, when when can we find that? And uh, what's the what's the last episode? What was the last episode on? Um, this this week's episode is actually on Norwegian Cruise Line because okay, I just got off of the Viva and mm-hmm. two of our other agents have also been on ships recently. So we talked about Norwegian Cruise Line, um, but it comes out once a week. Sometimes we do it live. Uh, okay. Sometimes we have it pre-recorded, but um, it's always a lot of fun, a lot of laughter. A lot of Perfect. information. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. Of course, uh, find me on Facebook at Magic mm-hmm. on a Dollar or Disney on a Dollar. Find me on two different different yeah. groups and pages. Find me mm-hmm. on Instagram at the Magic on a Dollar, and you can find this show mm-hmm. at the MSC Podcast on Instagram, which is where we are mostly. Yes. We're on Facebook too, but we don't do a lot there because I've kind of dropped all on that. But We'll try to improve on that as well. Uh, but of course, every Wednesday, you can mm-hmm. also find me on my movie podcast, The Deuce Cast Movie mm-hmm. Show, where we just dropped episode number 610. Uh, we talked about uh, Christmas gifts and things. And next week's episode is our what I call our Lumps of Coal, which is our oh my worst gosh, movies so of the year. The mo- we love movies, uh... but there's some that we watched that we were like, oh, these are just like, these are turkeys. And so we'll talk a little <laughs> bit about that. <laughs> That'll uh, be a good episode. Of course, award season's coming up as well. So we'll talk all about that as, as it comes. Um, but yeah, Jen, have a wonderful Merry Christmas. You I'm sure too. that I will talk Merry to you. Christmas, uh, what time is it now? Well, it's 3.30. I'm sure I will talk to you about 3.45. five minutes. <laughs> exactly. When I'm not talking to Kyla or Heather or anybody else from the agency. Um, but have a wonderful Merry Christmas you to everybody too. out there listening. Have a Merry, Merry Christmas. Thank you guys so much for listening to this show. Um, you know, it's, it's been mm-hmm. fantastic doing, we're, we're approaching 200 episodes, which yeah. will be sometime in the spring. We've got some ideas for what we're going to do for that. And, uh, yeah, it's just been delightful doing this podcast mm-hmm. with, with the people, with you and, and overall. Yeah. So thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful Christmas, Hanukkah, everything else you celebrate. Um, and just, you know, be nice to each other, be kind to each other. And don't forget mm-hmm. to really love on those Phoenicians. Thank you for listening to the Main Street Electrical Podcast. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at The MSE Podcast. Or visit our website at themsepodcast.com. Be sure to subscribe and may all your wishes come true.